Hey everyone, previously you saw me build this extruder, an extruder designed solely for NinjaFlex. I kind of just modified the Wade's extruder so that it could print flexible filaments. But you also saw, while I was building this, I didn't just retrofit my other extruder. I bought a whole new hot end, whole new motor, the whole shebang so I could have two separate extruders. The goal of this was to eventually combine them into a single extruder so I could get dual extrusion going on my maker farm. However, while browsing the internet, I came across this wonderful design by Cloud42. And it is called the Itty Bitty Extruder, designed specifically for the Maker Farm uh, Prusa i3Vs. And I think it is a wonderful design. And I've been wanting to do it, but the problem with this original design was that the, uh, the extruder, the section between the hobbed bolt and the hot end, was way too long for flexible filament. Flexible filament would just tend to get jammed there. However, I checked back about a week ago, and I found that he made this, the Itty Bitty Flex dual extruder for the Maker Farm system. And I immediately went and bought the hardware for it. So they, uh, he sells hardware kits where you can purchase all of the, the relevant hardware. And I also picked up the motors and everything needed for this Itty Bitty Flex dual extruder system. So that is what today's project's going to be. You can see I have all of the parts printed out for it. I have uh, a few parts that are missing here are acetone vapor bathing right now. But yeah, I want to get dual extrusion working on my Maker Farm Prusa i3V. So with everything printed out, I think it's time that I drill some holes and we'll start mounting some hardware and see if we can get two different hot ends. They're both, well, two of the same hot ends. They're both going to be uh, hexagon hot ends, the same one that I've been using. But let's see if I can mount them on the same extruder and get some dual extrusions going. Multicolored, multi-material, let's go. So I have the motors and pulleys connected. You can see that it's a belt drive system and there's two NEMA 14 motors, one on each side. And when the motor spin, it will turn the hob bolt that's connected in there. And I think this will uh, turn out pretty well. I'm hoping that I have the, uh, the belts hooked up correctly so that they're not going to slip off the pulleys. But I guess we won't find that out until we actually get it on there. And uh, yeah, it's coming together pretty easily. I've just had to take an X-Acto knife and file down a few of the edges to get the screws in correctly. Uh, but other than that, it's coming together pretty well so far. Um, the way once we're done is there's still bits and pieces that actually hold the hot end over here. And then we're going to replace this entire x-axis. We're just going to keep the back plate, but we're going to remove this shelf and all of the brackets. And we have custom 3D printed parts that are going to uh, replace those. So that's the next step is to get all that assembled. And you can see also uh, how this extruder is going to work. Um, the problem that I had with some of the, uh, the Wade's extruders was that it, we couldn't really use flexible filament with it just because the, the hob bolts, there's a lot of spacing between the hob bolt and the rest of the extruder. But you can see here that there's pretty much no space between there. The filament's going to slide directly from the hob bolt down into the hot end. And there's just very little spacing. So I don't think we'll have the issue with flexible filament that we had with the Wade's extruder. So I'm going to go assemble the, uh, the rest of this and I'll get back to you. Okay, so the extruder is assembled and it's on the X carriage. You can see that the X carriage shelf has been completely replaced with 3D printed parts, uh, but it still has the original backplate from Maker Farm. So the new pieces just kind of slide in and connect up that way. So with all this here, now it's time to take all the wires and plug it into the ramps and get the firmware updated. I have the additional stepper driver here that I need, so I need to plug this in. And I also have the uh, the servo and the new auto bed leveling probe that I need to hook up. So that's going to be the fun parts. So time to dig through all of the firmware and get this thing up and running. So a few hours later, I have all of the cables zip tied together. Nice cable management at the moment. And if we follow the cables up and around, I still haven't zip tied them in place yet. But you can see this rat's nest of wiring which is all of the uh, the new hardware connected up to our ramps board. 
including the new stepper driver and everything that this is going to need. And I've also updated the firmware so that I can give it some commands to initiate the auto bed leveling stuff. So if I'm over here in Proner Face and I type in G28, this should go to the middle of the board, extend the probe, and then it's going to try to touch off in the center of the board. Which you can see right there. So it touches off once, and then it does a fine level there, and now it's ready for the next command. And now the next command is G29, which is going to initiate the auto bed leveling. So what this is going to do is it's going to go to four points, it's going to go to four corners, it's going to go there, there, here, and here, and it's going to tap off and see how far away the bed is. And what this is going to do is it does some software stuff, it uh, forms a correction matrix, so it knows kind of how the bed is positioned. So that way, I probably won't have to worry about, you know, leveling the bed myself anymore. I can get it close and then let the software kind of make up for it, which I think is going to be really cool. But yeah, so this is all working. I'm going to go and I have to actually calibrate the, uh, the end stop now, because I have to tell exactly where that point is compared to the points of my new extruders. And once that's done, I guess I'll come back and show you this thing printing. So this is the first test print. There should be two consecutive little uh, rectangles, the inner one being orange and the outer one being blue. And we'll see if we have everything set up correctly. I doubt that I do. Should be... Oh, okay. So it looks like the first issue I have is that the second extruder is on the wrong side. I guess I have a sign problem in my firmware, because that uh, that blue rectangle that it's doing right now should be over that orange rectangle there. But they both seem to be printing, which is a great sign. So let me go grab that, let me go make that firmware change, and let's give this another try. So after a little bit longer crawling around in the firmware, I was able to solve the extruder offset issue. I just had the signs flipped. So now both extruders are working uh, together as they should. So I just kind of have a uh, two-tone test print going on now. And that'll tell us, you know, if this extruder is actually working right and if the dimensions are correct and, and all of that. Uh, it seems to be going really well so far. Um, I am starting to see some of the ooze issues that I'm going to have to deal with with a dual extruder. Uh, but that'll just come with a little bit more tinkering to kind of tone that down as much as I can. It'll never be perfect, but it could get better for sure. You can see that it's turning out pretty well for a, a first little test print. So I'm going to let this finish up, and let's see how it is. So my first test print has finished. And you can see that there's all these tendrils of ooze, where it uh, oozes out of the nozzle when it switches to the other color. So it's there on both sides, we have um, a lot of oozing going on, but I can play around with the slicer settings. So slicer uh, has a particular setting for ooze prevention, which kind of turns down the temperature of the nozzle that's not in use, so it'll be less likely to ooze. So I'm going to play around with that a bit. And if you look at the top, it's supposed to say X and Y with a plus and a minus, um, but that second, that orange didn't really come out because a lot of it oozed out, and so there was not a lot of plastic left to actually make those letters. So I'm just going to have to play around with the calibration a bit. Other than that, this print turned out pretty well. Um, I'm going to have to play around with pretty much all of the settings and actually get this calibrated. But for a first test, for a dual extrusion, I think it turned out really well. The, uh, the itty bitty flex dual extruder system by Cloud42 I'm, I'm liking it. I'm giving it my thumbs up. And, because I'm really impatient, I found a cool multicolored cat on Thingiverse that I'm printing up. This is again without any other calibration other than just kind of getting the coordinates kind of right. Uh, you can see that there's gaps and stuff in the prints. Um, that's due to me have not, having not finished calibrating the machine. But I was just, I, I just wanted to see it print. And I think this is the coolest thing. So yes! Dual extruder on the Prusa i3V, the itty bitty 
Uh, Flex, Dual Extruder. I love it, it's great. And because I can't stop myself, here's another print. This is kind of a uh, two-colored pencil case. You can see that it's just the two colors spiraling up. And you can see all the blobs happening, again, because of the ooze. I still haven't calibrated this. I just love seeing this thing print. Having a, uh, a dual extruder is just the coolest thing to me. And this is just with two different colors of ABS. I can't wait to put, say, Filiflex and then ABS in here and have some hybrid prints, because that will be really cool. So this will be the end of this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like the video if you've liked the video, and leave me a comment if you have any suggestions for future videos or for things that I should print now that I have a dual extruder. If you found any awesome dual extruder oriented models, I would love to see what you guys suggest. Other than that, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching Hoffman Engineering.